Cheers everybody. Who says you can't drink out of a Raku cup? <laughs> you can probably hear in the background over there I've got the kiln is on and it's just another day of Raku. <laughs> no big deal but I've just got some pots in there I've got to get them out. Well we might as well set the camera up so you can see what I'm doing. There's always something to pick up isn't there something to learn so Why don't we walk over with the camera and the tripod? Just to bring you in a little closer, I don't want to get too close because I've got to film this. Let's incline the camera angle down a bit. There we are. Let's go and have a have a look and see see if the glaze is melting. How do you tell? How do you tell if it's the, when it's the right time to take your pot out of the kiln? Well, what I do is I look into the kiln and if you look carefully to the surfaces of the of the glaze, you should begin to see the glaze melting. My grandfather used to say in his book, the, the Potter's book he used to say it should look like ice in the moonlight. <laughs> well, however you want to describe it, the important thing is that the the ice is uh, sorry, not the ice is melted. The glaze is melted. So, um, right, let's go and have a look and check them out. We're going to remove these smoking bins away from the door. That's number one. You know when you're lifting raku pots in and out of the kiln, you find that the, the tongs at the end here can get dirty. So in between pots, clean the tips of the tongs.
it's quite important to get things just where you want them. Just get the lid just where you need it. Get that extra bit of sawdust just handy so you can work efficiently. Make sure the lids seal as, as well as you can. That's the last one. Let me just swing the camera around so you can see. Okay. Number one, two, three, four, five. Put them in order. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth and then when you come back to them, you open them in order. Well, I think I can go and turn off the gas. Now, pe some people do different things with Raku. Once they put the, the Raku pot into the, in my case, wood shavings. Your case, it may be sawdust, it might be straw, it might be newspaper, dried leaves, whatever it is. Whatever it is, that the kind of result that you want. Um, So, uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> Skip my mind what I was going to say. Um, yeah, turn off the gas. Turn off the gas. What, what, what else was it I was going to say? I was going to say something. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue. Ah. Oh, yeah. Probably you might think, well, Simon, how long do we are you going to leave those pots in the in the sawdust, and are you going to scrub them off afterwards? Are you going to quench them? Well, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't do any quenching as such because I, I can't see what the what one is gaining by doing it. Um, what I do is I will leave those in there now for probably a good five, six, seven minutes. And then with the tongs, I will take them out 
only to expose them to the air for a few seconds. And once they've, once they've been exposed to the air, the, the glaze will begin to craze or crack on the outside. I then put them straight back into that little hot spot in the sawdust or the shavings, where, wherever they were, to continue that process of, 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 of burning and combustion. And the carbon that's produced from this process will get into the cracks and highlight the cracks. I don't know, uh, maybe if you're not familiar with Raku, here's a, here's a Raku mug. You'll see, you'll see it's, this is my sort of tea mug I use just for uh, drinking ordinary tea. Um, but that, that's a sort of typical Raku kind of finish, just for those of you who, who don't know what Raku is or don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so, and it, incidentally, th this cup has got no oxides in it or, or anything like that. It's just a base Raku frit, 80-10-10. I've given you the recipe, I don't know, half a dozen clips back. I gave you that recipe, 80-10-10. Look it up if you, if you want to know what it is. Um, anyway, just put that focus back. Um, what I was going to say was, um, I don't personally, after it's after I finally take it out, I don't quench it. Um, I may just leave them then. I could leave them there till tomorrow, maybe. The problem with that is, though, what you don't want to happen. You don't want the, you want the sawdust not to continue burning you don't want it to continue burning otherwise if it continues smoldering all night long that's not good so what you really want to do is take them out of the bins and I sometimes just take them out of the bins and let them cool off and then the next day with a, a pail of water do some scrubbing off um, in one of the the last clips we talked about with the different kinds of, of uh, things that we can use to clean off a, a raku pot, you remember. Um, and I was kind of sort of putting this question out there.